everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. and today's video, I'm going to teach you how to invoice your tenants and how to also set that up for a recurring transaction. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, let's talk about invoicing tenants. Um, I'm trying to make this a quick video, but honestly, you have to have some basics down. So I'm hoping you watch some of my other um, videos, but let's just talk about the first piece. I'm going to go over into chart of accounts. The most important thing you do before you go and try and invoice your client, excuse me, your tenant, is you're going to want to have um, your rental income code set up. Okay. So if you have one unit or two units or three units, make sure you first create your building, create your subunits of rental codes, like rental 101 Main Street is your building, then a sub income, then a sub of that unit A, unit B, unit C as income codes. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. These are already set up. So see this one, building one, I have unit one, building one, unit two, building one, unit three, unit five, I don't know where four is. But these are all income codes, right? And then if I have a second building, I first make a parent for that building. And then I have different units for that one. That's step one. You've got to get your chart of account income codes correct. All right. So make sure you build this first before you go on to the next piece. So I'll make one. I'll make a unit four for building one. So you go up here to the top. And this is frustrating. This is the, um, what did we call these? This is hard because this is this weird one. Okay, wait, we have this building. I already have it, right? Set up. So building one, and I'm gonna do unit four. And I'm, it already made it a category under that, okay? Now, some of you, your chart of accounts won't be so difficult and it'll be the easier one. I don't know why sometimes. Oh, we're looking for income. Here it is. Oh, but look, see, I screwed this up because I that's not the way I said that. Now I can easily edit it. Not, maybe not easily. Unit four. And you want them all to look the same. Be nitpicky. So you have that one. Don't do that. And if you're paying someone, insist that they are very particular in your books. Because if your books look kind of sloppy or like someone didn't really care, um, an investor you may be trying to take on or a partner or a banker, they're going to think that you don't care about your properties, which will be totally not true. But they're going to think because no one took the time to capitalize correctly, make sure everything kind of had the same way of, you know, creating the categories. They're going to think that if you're taking shortcuts on this, on your financial reporting, where else are you? So the nicer you make this look, the more confidence other people will have in you in investing in you. Okay. So again, here we have building one. This is the one I just put on, right? Unit four, building one. Okay, so that was step one. Step two, you gotta make the item. Go over the top right to that gear, click products and services. Okay, so see we have all these building ones, but we don't have unit four. So we're gonna click new, just choose service. And I'm gonna follow the, the way the others are. Unit four, I don't care about category. I don't even honestly know what that is. Now I did fix that, but right now it's not showing. I don't know why. Okay. 
And here you could have um, unit building one. This would show up every time you use this item. Building one, unit four, monthly rent. Okay. You could also pick your class if you're doing that. So I already had my class set up and that's a different video, but if you're setting up an item and you're using classes, make sure you put the class on. Okay, and then let's say that right now, you would have to go in and change this item if your rent changes for a unit, someone moves out, you change the rent. Or if your tenant's rent goes up, make sure you go fix your items, okay? Save and close. Okay. So we'll just use this unit four, building one, as our example. Okay. All right, we've got Tom Bond as our tenant. So let's create an invoice. Building one, unit four. Then it came up on here, $1,800. And because we fixed that unit on the item to have the class, it auto filled the class, okay? Let's say this is really for March 1st, and let's say it's a year lease. So right here, you can say make recurring, start date, 3 22 end, after 12 occurrences. Then, okay, we're gonna say three days because we're gonna see if it generates. Automatically send emails, right? So it's gonna recur on the first of every month. This is another big thing. This is should be due on receipt. So that means our customer terms are wrong and I'll show you how to change that. Okay, so save template. See, it didn't work. Now it's really not till the first, but let's go see. Because in QuickBooks Desktop, you log in, log out, and then it'll generate all of them. Previous date, next date. Okay. Okay, so. I went and I logged in and logged out and it still didn't do it. So let's just go here again and we'll just pretend. We're just gonna say use now. So it's gonna, I think, pull up and make it for three one. Okay, good. And then you could send it now. Let's say if you're doing, you're starting them for March 1st or whatever date, do these, save and send. Okay, send and close. Okay. It already it sent it. Okay. So now we do see that on the first, oh wait, oh, there was nothing previous. And this really should say, skip next date we made it because I wanted to show you. So look, now they're all set up for March, April 1st. So if you have that problem where it's not like desktop, in desktop, you could make something for three days prior, log it out of the program, log back in, it'll ask you if it's okay to generate the recurring transactions. You say yes, and then they go out. Um, in this case, apparently, even though I said three days and there's only 28 days in February, you would think it would send it out, but it didn't. Um, but then these will auto generate. The main thing to check inside of these is, which this is a demo file. Oh, I think I kept putting my own in here. I keep getting emails from this fake account um, that automatically will send these out um, for a certain amount of time and three days in advance. Okay, so I went to my the email that I set up for this. Um, and just so you could see, this was sent out um, on February 26th at 4.22 in the morning for one of these auto ones that I made up, right? 
So it went out on time. And I, let's see where we can, you can print it here. And of course, I don't have the link, right, for them to pay online because this is a fake file and not a real company. I couldn't set up for real payment. But I'm opening it here. And then you might not want to use um, QuickBooks anyway, right? I mean, to receive payments. Let's just, oh, why is it so hard? Oh, okay, so this one, I don't know why I can't. Okay, here's better. So here it says uh, the company, right? Then, there you go. So this is, it went out. So that is what they would receive and they might receive it, you know, it was set three days ahead before the first. So I think that's fine. This came out, I think on the 26th. So yesterday at 4 a.m. So the 26th, 27th, 28th, three days prior, then the first would be the next day. So it worked out well. So this is really a great way to, um, you know, make sure at least your tenants should know they owe you. Of course they know, but they're going to say they forgot. So this way, if you automate sending them invoices, they got something. It's really, you forgot. I, not only do you, did you sign a contract and at least, but I also emailed you a reminder. Okay. I know as landlords, you get to have, as some people have told me, it's like their other set of children, their tenants. Um, I hope you don't have those tenants. I hope this was helpful. Um, please put any uh, comments of things you would like me to teach and have a great day.